So hello, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be with you today and to have the privilege to participate to the Taizu Medical Expo. Hopefully, uh, we will be able to be there in presence uh, in the short future, in the near future. I will be introducing to you the technology and knowledge transfer activities of the ICG. So the ICGB, as you well know, is, inter is an intergovernmental organization with 66 member countries and uh, has three main uh, components, main uh, laboratories that we call components, one located in Trieste, New Delhi and Cape Town. And we recently launched a regional research center in uh, China. The mandate of the organization is really to be uh, an international organization for research training and tech transfer in life sciences to promote sustainable global development. So tech transfer, knowledge transfer is basically the mandate of the organization and takes many form knowledge transfer. You can transfer technologies, we can transfer know-how, collaborate with partners to develop innovative solutions. And I would say that all our six instruments of action point to knowledge transfer, which is basically really the uh, bread and butter of all of our activities. Uh, I will not go into detail in all of these because you have heard the presentations by my colleagues. Um, I just like to mention that also in the technology transfer sector, we do follow our institutional strategic plan 2020-2030, which is aligned to the sustainable development goals. The research macro areas of the ICGB, where we have active collaborations with the industry and other partners, are in infectious diseases, non communicable diseases, uh, medical biotech, industrial biotechnology, and plant biology and biotechnology. And I'm going to give you an overview of the translational research we are doing in this uh, particular area. To start with, I would say that relationship with industry happen according to the same modalities applicable in academia. So ICGB licenses patents and know-how, adding special clauses uh, were applicable for its member states, uh, particularly these developed countries. Our research group enter into research and development agreement with companies. And one of the flagship programs in technology transfer has been the transfer of technologies for the production of biosimilars. I will tell you in a minute about this. Uh, with regards to startup promotion, I'm just going to mention this because uh, we licensed in 2020 two technologies developed by the Molecular Medicine Lab to two startups that have been established in London. As you know, the ICGB is an intergovernmental organization, so it cannot hold equity in companies, which by definition are established under national law, but we can license our assets, our IP assets to such companies. So with regards to the development of biosimilar uh, drugs and technologies, we do have at the ICGB a biotechnology development unit uh, that operates in 30 years in the development of technologies for the production uh, of uh, uh, biosimilars. Biosimilars are um, the generic drug of an original biological product. And the expertise that our biotechnology development unit has developed in the past uh, 30 years, I would say, is in the development of cost-effective processes for the development of such technologies. So although such uh, technologies are a, a, a copy, let's say, of an originator, okay, uh, they are very innovative in the sense that we try to develop them in a cost-effective manner. So, to date, we have developed technologies for the production of 14 uh, biosimilars, which is all the biosimilars of first generations, and are currently focusing on the development of second generation biosimilars, starting with Trastuzumab. Uh, we do follow standards, quality standards, European Pharmacopeia, wherever uh, available. We do work in three platforms, as you will hear or have heard from my colleague, Natasha Shkoko, uh, which is a bacterial platform, mammalian cell platform, and yeast platform. Okay, and uh, in these slides, you can see what is the batch size of our um, developed technologies. Since 2020, thanks to the contribution of the regional government, uh, the ICGB has a new pharma compliant laboratory that will allow both a um, 
research and development in a pharma compliant lab of the first phases of the technology, but also, but also it will allow to provide a number of services to partner companies willing to collaborate with the ICGP, uh, again, in a pharma compliant environment. And this is a brief outline of the services that are available within the um, new laboratory of the biotechnology development unit. So from cell development, upstream processing, downstream processing, all kinds of chromatography, uh, linkers chemistry, and of course, quality control. To date, we have had over 70 collaboration agreements with many companies located in over 20 different countries in the world. And in green on the map, you can see countries where ICGB technology have actually made it to the market. So where our technology have translated into uh, products. The steps for tech transfer, and we welcome opportunities, collaboration opportunities in this sector, uh, is this process is very, very simple. Basically, we sign a technology transfer agreement, providing for scientists uh, from the partner company to spend a period from four to six weeks in the ICGB laboratories to gain hands-on experience, learn the process, acquire all the skills and techniques. And then when this is done, and it can last from four to six weeks, depending on the technology to be acquired, uh, the scientists leave carrying with them protocols, know-how, and some research-grade material for the reproduction of the technologies at their own premises. We do follow our partners also after the training um, to provide assistance wherever this is required. In response to the pandemic, as we could not host uh, scientists in our laboratories, we have developed video-based trainings. And uh, uh, I must say that those that we have done so far has been quite, have been quite successful. So this is video-based trainings, short videos, followed by technical assistance online following the training and video tutorials for troubleshooting and uh, any possible needs. So the ICGB, as I said, we do collaborate a lot with uh, uh, industrial partners. We have many group leaders that are active in collaboration to bring their technology closer to the, to the commercialization stage or to basically achieve progress from, our, from the lab to the clinics. And I'm just showing a number of examples. This is a project called Prefer, which is aimed at the realization of an advanced therapy medicinal product uh, able to revascularize tissues affected by difficult wounds, such as chronic ulcers, diabetic foot. And we are doing this in collaboration with a company. Again, here is a project called Gida Chip, which is performed in collaboration with Alifax, uh, a company focused on diagnostics, and that is proprietary of the device that you see in the picture. So the purpose of the project has been the development of a multi-parametric um, diagnostic kit for the simultaneous detection of three arboviruses, Zika, Dengue, and Chikungunya. And, Chikungunya. and during 2020, of course, the um, kit has been tailored also to the detection of uh, COVID-19. Uh, the ICGB is very um, is, is also focused on uh, uh, gene therapy, and in this case that I'm going to show you, we have a group, uh, the Mouse Molecular Genetics Laboratory, led by Dr. Andres Muro here in the picture, a group that has an expertise in the development of animal models of genetic human diseases and potential therapies as well, using gene therapy, genome editing, and pharmacological approaches. So the group uh, is collaborating with many companies at uh, many pharma companies, of course, at the also at the international level and uh, welcome new collaboration. And these slides is an example of the activities led by the group uh, where they developed a mouse model of Kriegel and Najar and participated in the first ever clinical trial uh, for Kriegel and Najar syndrome supported by a EU grant a European uh, grant. And three patients have been treated so far. And as a background information, kriegel najjar syndrome is a rare genetic disorder, uh, which is uh, characterized by an inability to properly convert and clear bilirubin from the blood. But so there is this expertise in how, which has been translated uh, into clinical uh, projects. 
Being a research center, the ICGB is also focused on basic science research. And every time there is a new invention here, we do patent our technology and try to develop a path for um, taking such projects to the ground. So in this case, we developed uh, the group led by Serena Zakini and the Cardiovascular Biology Laboratory, developed an innovative biological drug effective on the prevention or treatment of metastasis. So we are in the process of developing the recombinant proteins to proof of concept this activity, and uh, we'll keep you posted. Another area of expertise of the center is uh, the focus on diagnostics and vaccines. And I would add particularly at the New Delhi component. Uh, on the bottom of the page, you will see a number of boxes. Uh, this is all uh, reagent, this is all kits, diagnostic kits that have been developed uh, uh, with reagents uh, developed by the ICGB and transferred to such companies. So we've developed reagents for HIV diagnostic, HCV diagnostic, hepatitis B diagnostic, dengue, and these are all still av available for transfer. These are suitable, I, I, I really want to stress this point, that these are suitable for large volume markets and low uh, profit kits. So the partner, the partner, to, which we, to whom we will transfer this technology needs to be very strong. And uh, we could always send a sample, a free sample of the protein for the company to test and if they would be able or, or willing to, to continue the tech transfer. Uh, again, particularly in daily um, groups are focused on the development of vaccines and therapies for uh, tropical diseases that still constitute a major uh, health burden across our constituency particularly uh, malaria, tuberculosis, and dengue. So we've had in 2016 a big agreement with a, an agreement with a large pharmaceutical company, Sun Pharmaceuticals, for the development of a therapy against uh, uh, dengue and also a vaccine, which is now at late clinical trial stage. Just to give you uh, an example of a technology of an improved TB vaccine that is currently uh, under development in New Delhi and it's been patent and so on. And then, uh, as this has been a really uh, particular year, uh, we have, um, are kind of proud to say that we have supported a lot our constituency, uh, both research institutes, but also companies located in our member countries in response to the pandemic. We've done so by doing research activities, which are the standard activities of the center through the development of therapeutic antibodies, but also through many other activities um, which um, happened mainly in the second semester of the pandemic when really we wanted to start, you could tell that we wanted to start to live again uh, this time with the virus. And so many companies reverted to the ICGB to, to develop and test uh, sanification protocols and uh, to test virucidal agents and devices. And, and we have supported uh, companies at international level in, in Asia, uh, in Italy, and really men, a lot of activity in this context, um, which, which is still very relevant. And uh, I'm, I'm showing an example of a project that we've conducted uh, with, our, with member countries in Africa, whereby we've transferred a technology developed by New England Biolabs to mainly help those countries enhancing the detection capacities in uh, response to the pandemic. Just a quick premise to, to this activity. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, counting 70.2% of the world's population, reported today only 3% of global uh, COVID cases. So with this premise in mind, the ICGB uh, wanted to develop a project to help enhancing detection capacity and response to this and respond to this um, testing need. So thanks to a contribution to the partnership with New England Biolabs that uh, provided the kits and the support of the Bill Gates Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, the ICGB developed a project that entailed basically the transfer of a kit, which is low cost and very uh, rapid and easy to use, sharing of best practices. And we basically conducted a multi-centric 
prospective observational study uh, to assess the diagnostic, uh, the NEB diagnostic kit, comparing it to the gold standard, which is the classic PCR method. So we've conducted this uh, uh, clinical study, this multicentric clinical study in Trieste, in Nigeria, in Cameroon, in Ethiopia, uh, and in Kenya. And the results of the study, this is the protocol of the study, how it was conducted, we shared the reagents with all the partners, but the point is that the results of the study showed that uh, the, both the specificity and sensitivity the sensitivity and specificity of the lamp kit is actually very, very high. So based on the results of the study, and this is the teams that have collaborated with us along the way uh, in, the, in the four countries. So based on the results of the study of phase one, we are currently uh, developing a phase two to leverage on the existing network, but also to expand geographical area of impact and activities. And we will include also surveillance among such activities. I'm providing the link to the project video if you want to watch it, this is kind of informative. And last but not least, the ICGB has a strong interest and focus also in the bioeconomy sector. So we have groups uh, uh, focused uh, uh, on the study of the plant microbiomes. So microbiome is the microorganism living in a particular environment. And it is now widely recognized that in plants, such microorganisms influence the health of the plant. They contribute both to the uh, biocontrol, basically resistance to pathogens, and to the growth promotion and acting as uh, biofertilizers. So considering the fact that this um, study and utilization of the results of the research based on the microbiome is promoting a more sustainable uh, agriculture and more sustainable agricultural practices, such studies have attracted the attention of companies active in, bio, in the biotech sector, I would say at the international level, both nationally, um, in, the, in the US and across the board, because uh, companies that produce fertilizers are willing to replace part of the chemical products or to add to their uh, standard products, also products based on, uh, um, on, uh, on uh, natural uh, enzymes and uh, plant uh, acting as plant uh, probiotics. And then uh, particularly at our component in New Delhi, we have groups uh, active, uh, uh, a group of uh, a large number of research groups active on the development of technologies for the production of uh, uh, biofuels. This particular slide uh, I'm showing because it points to a technology developed by the microbial engineering group uh, led by Dr. Shams Yazdani, who has discovered a cocktail of enzymes that have been shown to have a balanced cellulase and hemicellulase activity that can break down uh, the agricultural biomass of various sources, including rice straw, sugar cane bagasse, uh, cotton stall, for example, into simpler sugar, okay, with great efficiency. So the simple sugar released by the action of these enzymes can further uh, be fermented to ethanol uh, to produce second generation biofuel or any other uh, biochemicals. So we would be really willing to, to collaborate or open for collaboration with the companies active in this sector. To conclude, I would like to mention that the ICGB, we do have a, a most, um, um, say, updated or say latest uh, facilities that are available for use to partners in our member countries. We have the short-term fellowship program specifically dedicated if a you have a colleague, a student that wants to come and learn a specific technique or utilize a specific technique that could avail of this program to come and use one of our um, facilities available. Then as uh, the fundraising technology transfer and innovation office, I would like to stress that we um, have many industrial partners besides those that I have showed in this slide that we try to uh, be part of the strategic networks in technology transfer. 
and uh, we're always trying to broaden the scope of uh, our strategic partnerships and networks. We do participate in the um, NetFile Group of Technology Transfer Offices and the ISTP. Uh, we partner with Symbio and uh, have a strategic cooperation with the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. But as I'm saying, we would be very willing to expand uh, with TT networks also on the Chinese territory. And I'm leaving you with our contacts. Uh, I am Martina Viviani, Head of Fundraising TT Innovation, and uh, I'm also listing here the contact of my colleague, Simona Russo, who is Knowledge Transfer Manager of the organization. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention and look forward to future opportunities for collaboration. Thank you very much.